Hey, how you doing? On this episode of The Real World, Do It Yourself, what you have to do when the tree trimming can't wait and your pull saw lopper has broke and the gardeners aren't going to do, excuse me, this sort of extreme cutting. All right. So basically what I have here, you know, a lopper, you know what I mean, it's got the, it's got the handle on it, you go down like that, it's got the blade that goes whoop, not a swivel. It's good for cutting, you know, sucker growth, dendral growth, you know, dis you know, shoot, shoots, you know, deciduous growth, but you can't cut much more than, hmm, you can't even cut through that with it. It puts a lot of torque on it. Doesn't matter how sharp the blade is, it's, all, it's a matter of torque. So, you gotta have your, your saw on that. Now, I can't remember exactly why mine broke, but yours probably will too, or it was, it was pivoting back and forth, meaning the blade was right here, and it was going. And when the blade goes like that, and you're pushing right here, Forget about it. I mean, the, your your blade has to go like this, and this is how this this is the point of the real world. You can make your own tools better as long as you have a base to start. Hey, how you doing? Stage two. Uh, as crazy as this may seem, but of course, in the real world, I will always show you the most complicated and MacGyver way of doing things. Hopefully, you have a more a simpler way of doing things, but. My handle on the pull saw is an old, you know, pool net skimmer. But the thing of it is, past the part where the net plugs in, you know, those little pressy parts, you know, you see the holes right there, dink, dink, and it goes in and out. Apparently, this whole thing is solid through there. So I need to make use of this. So I don't have a dowel rod, you know, I don't necessarily want to drill through there, nor could I, because the thing is six feet long for seven and I don't have any gals you know bigger around to drill that diameter you know what I'm saying so I went out to the uh, you know the Paul Bunyan wood stack and got me a yeah believe it or not piece of wild wood basically what we're gonna do we're gonna drill it to that point. You just want to make sure if you're going to go MacGyver all out like I'm doing that uh, you've got a nice even plane to work with. I mean, this is the straightest piece I can find out there um, that's wider than this diameter. Okay, because this, and the reason I say that is you can see how no matter how much you torque it down, the saw blade here, it's going to pivot as opposed to that. Again, if your blade's going like that, forget about it. All right, phase two, got our piece wrapped around and I measured off how deep it goes in because you're going to reciprocate on how where, where that goes to the end. That's where you're going to drill your countersunk bolts. Stage four of phase one. You see how I've got this counter sunk. Now my recommendation, boy look at that. I mean there's like a 70 second of an inch right there between the lock wash and I, yeah, I staggered it. Meaning you want to do it this way as well. You counter sink it opposite ways. But I really should have, and you will too, want to take it in just a little bit deeper. Meaning you, know, you take it to there so you can space your countersunk parts here apart. Now as you can see, making a female end to a male end, which I don't know anything about, keep your snickers to yourself. As you saw, my original piece was a, a male end to a female end, but I cut it so well that I couldn't get it out, so I had to start over. So I've lost, a, I've lost about nine inches, gained six inches, got two more coming, that's what she said. And 
So now the key is that line represents how far the bore goes in. So you want to keep yourself a little bit, you know, you want to take it to right there. Now because I got a bend in the piece that I'm using, you may want to consider that too. It gives you extra torque when you pull back. You've got to keep in mind where you're going to cut your center line for your blade. So we're going to do it about like that. Now this is my third rendition of this pole saw. That's why I'm showing you guys this because you're going to learn from my mistakes. This time it's going to keep. Yeah, that, that's going to work. You're going to have like, uh, I don't know, it looks like a half inch of a buttress right there between the borehole and cutting into it. But even if you did, it wouldn't really affect it. The key thing is, is to match the bend in your assembly. You got to put your blade right there. Because otherwise it's going to go all squampus. You're going to put it up to your tree limb and your blade's going to go off in a, another direction. You want it to be bent down if you have a bend. If you don't have a bend, great. If you're using a dowel rod as opposed to something metal here, fine. Alright, so here we are. Stage 4. Phase 1. What I did You'll want to do a better job than I did. But it's tricky. Just get closer. Ow, 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 ow. If you have a jigsaw, great. If not, this will not work for you and stop right now. Sorry to waste your time. You're going to want to center line it. I, with sort of there, you can see where it's like, eh. If you had to break that down, it would be hmm, 55, 45, maybe even 60, 40. But you use a jigsaw blade that's no wider than your pruning blade. Alright, what you're going to do, obviously remembering where the bend is in our situation, that away. Now what you got to do is measure from the top of that, top of your piece, I'll explain later. Drill through it, you're going to countersink it in three spots. Hey, how you doing? And so if that doesn't work out for you, you could see where my marks are here. And right here, I've got that. But I marked it over there. It doesn't look like it's going to go that far. So you're going to have to just wing it, MacGyver. All my MacGyverite followers, you know, it's just going to go down. You want to keep this at the top of the piece to put your O-clamp around so it doesn't flex up. You want this to flex down as you insert it. Very important, and I'll explain why later. So, yeah. This is why we live in the real world. Let me rephrase that. This is why I show you how it is when you live in the real world. Looks good on paper type deal, but it don't work out like that. So, Alright, so how do you adjust on the fly? Like Clint Eastwood says in, uh, uh, what's that movie? Oh, I can't remember. The only movie done about Grenada. Why can't I remember that? I saw it on Military Channel umpteen times. You adapt, you improvise, you're gone. That's what we're doing. Hey, how you doing? Heartbreak Ridge! I finally got it. Yeah, please. Forget Marine Corps stuff. Okay, so I pressed this in with a clamp. If you have a clamp, great. If not, use a hammer like I'm going to do. We're going to even this out and drill it in close to the mark that I made here. Okay, I know this seems ridiculous, but if you make your pole saw if you, if you do your pole saw remade in this fashion, you will never ever have to redo it again. You'll have to replace the blade sooner than you have to, you know, re replace the assembly. All right, phase five, part two, or no, part one. All right, you can see I've got my uh, past the mark. I've got one countersunk, but you'll see the problem. You can't do just one. 
There we go. All right. You see how the blade is flexing, right? And truth to tell, that's too far down because you'll have a hell of a time bringing it back up. You want it close to parallel. You want it like that. You want this part to parallel. This is where the O-clamp part's going to come in. I'm going to point it just a little bit more down that way. You might want to consider that as well. And we're going to sink. We're going to bore the next counter uh, sink bore right there. Put our O-clamp here. Actually, that's still a little bit too far. Truth to tell, that's how you want it to look. We pull it out. <clears throat> All right, so we go vertical. It's like that. So your angle of pulling down is not so severe. We actually have to pull that even a little bit more back. All right, so you understand. You'll see how it looks. It's going to be. I'm not going to leave it like that. It's a bit too severe. It's too much torque on the back end, and that's yeah, what you're doing. All right. So there you have it, Jim. I'm an engineer, not a doctor. We'll just cut the tip off of here. But there's your uh, extension or your pull saw. There's just one little problem that I have that I am going to show you guys that you don't want to have happen. And how do I do this? You can see how that's kind of flexing, especially like right there, right? I'm sure you can see it. Okay, there's nothing more aggravating, even though there's this is still hooking down, this part has got to not be flexed up, say like, I don't know, two degrees from horizontal. Because when you're going dip, 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 dip. Nothing more aggravating when you're trying to cut you know, a good sized limb and it's pushing up on it. You know, it's got to go that way. So, what we're going to do, and again, I should probably call this playlist you know, the real world MacGyver, is you probably won't have the time or the patience to do what I'm showing you here, but it's how to fix, you know, if, if things don't work out the way you need them to. I'm going to cut out some heavy gauge aluminum and make a collar so to speak drill it so that it goes right there and keeps this from flexing up because we want it to flex horizontal to one to two degrees at most you don't want it going like that either it'll get hung up as you as you as you go forward you go pull back forget about it it's it's all geometry here the proper geometry is the key to retrofitting your pull saw. Alright, so I don't need to bore you with the details on that. I'm going to go and make it and we will be ready to cut. Alright, final stage of phase one. Or final phase of stage one. You can see how I shaved off the middle cutting bit, that end. That's so it doesn't get hung up on any other branches around what you may be cutting. And there you have it. A Tim the Tool Man Taylor customized better than original pull saw. Ah, ah. Of course, really like that. I would have the knowledge to attach a little gasoline engine like he did on that show to everything. And this would go or something like that. But in the real world, you're not gonna have time for that. You can see where I put the collar here. Blade is not gonna flex. Your mount may, that's why it's important to get the diameter when you're making a female end. Keep your snickers to yourself. It might have been better for me to go to the hardware store and gotten a dowel rod, you know, that was like that. And then I could have just zip with the table saw, countersunk it that way. But you've seen the procedure. You still would have had to have done that, cut it down the center, countersink it through there, and so forth. All right, so we're ready to go prune some trees.